with Stephen Hellwagon. Yeah, let me, can I go ahead and uh, open just with a quick uh, statement here, if I could? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, obviously looking forward to this, uh, uh, this game here on Tuesday in, uh, it should be a should be a tremendous challenge. Got uh, a lot of respect for this uh, Notre Dame program and uh, the job that uh, Mike has done over a number of years. I think they're going to have a really good season, and uh, I've enjoyed watching them here. Um, so I, it'll be uh, it'll be a great challenge uh, to go there. I'm looking forward to obviously being on the road for the first time, but it'll be a great challenge for us. So they're uh, really skilled, great size, really well coached and um, have some veteran guys returning as well. So um, it would be, uh, be a great challenge for us as a group. All right, kicking things off with yep. Stephen Hellwagon. Okay. Um, they think they've only played the one game at Michigan State, and uh, Michigan State obviously is a pretty good team. Uh, do you feel that that kind of gives them uh, – I don't know, a positive or an edge because they've seen what their weaknesses are. They know what's been exploited and they've had over a week to fix it with some cancellations that they've had. Just do you think that that may play to their favor that they've been in a tough game already and they know uh, what, what needs to be fixed? You know, it's an interesting question, Steve. I, you know, I suppose you could look at it like that. I, I think that's possible that, um, that given the fact that they played one of the best teams in the country, and I would put Michigan State, Michigan State's been one of the most impressive team I've seen in limited time on film. Um, so I think there's no question that uh, um, that experience has, has, has helped them. Um, and relative to maybe our experiences, could that give them advantage? I, I'm not sure, but there's no question. I'm sure that's helped them and provided some really positive feedback and things for them to work on. And just as a follow, you've had a, a game canceled now uh, with Saturday's game and uh, just maybe the dynamics of that, how it all came about. And uh, as I now understand it, you guys are really close to announcing Cleveland State as a uh, new opponent, it sounds like. Uh, or is anything else in the works? And, and what can you say, I guess, leading up to that announcement that I understand is forthcoming? Yeah, and I, I wouldn't even aware we weren't we didn't announce announce it yet, but uh, I guess um, yeah, you're we're going to announce that for sure. That game will be on Sunday. Um, I, I think the um, um, I, I, tell me again what your question was to begin with. Just I'm having a game canceled, how that all unfolded. Yeah, we found and, out. On, yeah, we found out yeah. at the end of practice on Friday night. Uh, David Egelhoff came to me at the very last ten minutes of practice and said the game had been canceled. Uh, kind of said it as he was said, "Hey, FYI, the game's canceled." I kind of acted like I didn't hear him and continued on with practice to finish a practice up. I didn't want our guys to be alarmed. Um, we finished uh, some five on zero stuff and uh, stretched and went over and went on the bleachers and I explained it to them. They handled it okay, but they were disappointed, uh, as you'd expect. Uh, they were really disappointed. Uh, they wanted to play. Um, we met as a staff afterwards and looked at a number of different scheduling options. And you know, I'd like to be able to provide another game for our guys. We looked at a number of options uh, because of the testing protocols. It's hard to get a game that quickly turned around because your opponent would have to have two, two days of uh, uh, clean tests. So uh, we'll see if we find another window. I, I do anticipate us adding another game at some point, Steve. I just don't know when and where right now. Okay. Thank you. Up next, Adam Jardy. So how ready do you think you guys are for a jump in competition and not any disrespect to the first three teams that you face, but obviously playing an ACC team, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different challenge. You touched on going on the road. How ready do you think you, your guys are for a couple of new challenges like that all, all at once? You know, I'm really, really anxious to see Adam. Uh, I'm really anxious to see how, how we will, how we'll be and how we'll respond both to being on the road together um, it's been a while, right, since we've had to pack our bags and suitcases and head out together. Excuse me, been since March. So I'm really anxious to see we're playing a veteran team. I think that's – I'm anxious to see how we, how we do playing a veteran team. We're, we're, we're playing, obviously, an ACC opponent that's a talented group. So 
Um, I, you know, right now, I think, I think we're all um, excited to see what we're going to uh, look like here in, in this environment on the road. And I know you guys sort of try to simulate road environments when you can. Obviously, this year, all road environments are everything's so different this year. Are you doing anything to try to simulate what it's going to be like being on the road? Does the Covelli Center experience help you guys? At all? You know, I don't know that it did um, necessarily help a, a lot. Uh, it was a different environment. I think that in some ways probably is good. Uh, I, I, my understanding is they'll have some types of fans, I believe maybe uh, family, some family and friends uh, that, that can attend the game. So it'll be some type of a road environment. Uh, but I don't think there's anything like actually going and, and experiencing it and going through a walkthrough and, you know, a shoot around the next day and being in the hotel and all of those things. Um, it's good. To, it's good to get it, get it done here this early in the season though, for sure. Up next, Matt Goldman. Hey coach. Um, so a lot of anticipation, an excitement for uh, hopefully we see Seth Towns soon, but just wondering where will we see Seth Towns in the rotation, especially with you guys have such a balanced lineup? Well, you know, as far as Seth's concerned, I think he's going to be kind of a game to game and week to week decision. And uh, I think it's really going to depend on uh, what he feels like the confidence in his, uh, his knee. And he's only been about a week and a half into practice right now. So, uh, I think it's really regular communication between us and what he feels like his conditioning slash confidence is and his ability to play at this, at this level right now. Uh, I think he sees light at the end of the tunnel in terms of working towards kind of returning to some of the play that he had um, his sophomore year. But I think he also sees that that could be well in, in his future. So, uh, we obviously anticipated that Seth would be a part of our rotation as we did kind of with, with uh, Abel um, and Musa. So we've had to change that a little bit, uh, and it's given some other guys opportunities. Um, and that will continue to be the case until he's fully healthy. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Up next, Stephen Means. With this being – Basically, the first game against a, a talent equated opponent. For a, 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 is there anything you're trying to learn from your team going into a game like this, especially being on the road? Yes, yeah, Stephen. I think just as much as anything, you're trying to learn um, how we respond together in a different environment, how they take the game plan to the floor, um, what's our level of uh, collective uh, competitiveness and toughness. Uh, in terms of our approach and our physicality and then our mindset in the midst of a, a, of a game, the ups and downs of a game. I think those are all things you're anxious to see as a coach. Um, how do our guys respond to playing a really good opponent and uh, the, the, the challenges that that's going to present in the midst of the game? Um, what's our resolve when a team makes a run on us? All those things are, are uh, things I'm anxious to see. Oh, really? So he wasn't necessarily playing, you know, Big Ten level basketball where he came from. Um, how do you feel he's adapted to? Obviously, not playing Big Ten level basketball, but just how do you think he's adapted to playing, you know, at Ohio State through these first few games here? Who did you mention? I'm sorry. Hello. I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, Stephen. Who did you mention? I'm sorry, Stephen. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Sotos. Oh, Jimmy Sotos. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, he's getting better. You know, he's getting better. Um, he's practiced better. Um, he's, I think he's getting a better feel, a little bit of better feel. I really see that his progression will just be that, a progression as the year goes on. Uh, his comfort level with playing both uh, at the one and the two spot. Uh, but he's practiced really well. Um, he, had a, <laughs> he had a big moment the other day when he hit that transition three. Uh, I think we'll see some more of those kind of moments with Jimmy. Um, I, I really do, but it's going to take some time. Thanks. Up next, Patrick Murphy. Chris, uh, in a normal year, we're, we get to spend a little more time around you guys. 
um, see the guys in person, things like that. So I'm curious if you can take us into the team a little bit and, and the chemistry that you guys have developed. Obviously a lot of the same guys, but some new faces. W yeah. What's that been like developing that this year? And how do you feel it's coming along here before you go into a, a road game like you were talking about against Notre Dame? Good. I, I feel good about, about that overall, Patrick. I, th I think that, uh, you know, that's also a work in progress. I don't know that you fully really know all the stuff about your team until you go through difficult stretches in a season, uh, a loss or, you know, a, a difficult stretch. I don't know that you fully can comprehend the, the kind of the overall makeup and chemistry of your team. Um, at least in college basketball, because the season's so long and you have so many ebbs and flows in your season. But um, I, I do, I like the maturity and the, the chemistry of this group. I feel, feel good about that right now. I felt good about it uh, from day one. But um, we face some adversity, but nothing like what you're going to experience playing the competition we're playing and playing against are playing in the best best league in the country on a night to night basis. Up next, Timothy Hall. Hey, Chris, I I heard you answer a question about Justin at the end of the at the end of your radio show just now. I was wondering, just with a guy like that, and with with the threat that he can be, and what that can do with the rest of the offense. I think he started 0 for 3 in that last game from downtown. I'm curious if, if you watched it in tape the same way. I thought I saw him pass up on maybe two, possibly three good looks, like after that 0 for 3 start. And then he made the last three of the game. I'm just wondering what those conversations are like in game, because you said he needs to be aggressive and attack the open three-point looks. Yeah. Yeah, Timmy, it's been just keep shooting, keep taking good ones, keep staying confident in your ability to shoot the ball. Don't, uh, don't let a good shot uh, pass you by. Um, you know, be, be confident and aggressive in doing that. Um, he's worked on the other, some of the other details of the game, his defense, uh, his rebounding, some of those things that I think are important for him. But uh, stay aggressive. That's been it, it as much as anything. Because as you mentioned, I felt like he might have passed one up as well. And I think we told him that in the course of the game, you know, stay, stay aggressive, stay loose, be ready to be ready to shoot it. Uh, he provides an, a, a gravity out there on the floor, even when he's when he doesn't touch the ball, uh, just because people know he's capable of really shooting the ball. So um, I was really happy to see him make those final three, really happy to see it just I think it was a little bit of brush, breath of fresh air because he was putting, I think, some pressure on himself, probably a little bit too much. The one other guy I wanted to ask you about was Eugene. Just through three games, he looks like he could be, just with his size and his length, he could just be an incredible two-way player when it's all said and done. He even wasn't afraid to take the three. What, what do you want to see from him with growth for this his whole freshman season? Just that. I, I think he's his impact this year with this group will be – defending multiple perimeter positions, rebounding the ball, presenting uh, some, some uh, rebounding opportunities defensively and offensively. And then when, when his offense is there, be, being ready, um, uh, when, when his offense is there, that's what he's going to provide to this group. And if he does that well, uh, I think that there's no question that he can, he can be a real, a real asset coming off the bench. Um, and it'll change, obviously, in the coming years. But uh, that's what he can provide to this group. And, uh, you know, I've been pleased with some of the things we've seen so far through three games. Up next, Brendan Gulick. Hi, Chris. Hey, Brendan. Um, I don't want to make too much of a, of a comparison from one year to the next, because I really feel like every team's got uh, a different identity. But because so many of these guys were here last year, you guys got off to a really, really good start in the beginning of the year last year, and, and you beat some good non-conference teams. Do any of those lessons carry over from year to year? And, and if they do, what are some of the things that maybe you guys circle back and talk about? You know, I, I don't know. You, I don't want to speak, speak for them. I, I do think that um, – 
I do think that there it's a different year because you don't have that summer and fall of, of your team being together as much as it was in the past. So um, I, I do think that, that it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a different year in that regard. And, and physically we're a little bit of a different team than what we were early last year, you know, as well, um, both health wise and just in general. But I, I do think guys can reflect on some of those moments um, and obviously feel really good about it because, as you mentioned, many of them were, were a, a, a part of it or a significant part of, of those types of games and those types of atmospheres. Um, so, you know, hopefully that, that can help us. Um, you know, I think the – you know, we'll, we'll see, though. I think it's a new group. Every year is a new year. Um, but I do know that those guys can reflect back on the impact they made and the awareness that they had – that, hey, a challenge is coming and in front of them. And then one more thing. I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, who do you think is the most steady player on your team, on the floor, off the floor, just a guy that carries himself, doesn't ride the emotional roller coaster, get too high, too low? Who, who do you want, you know, more of that kind of guy? CJ. Yeah, CJ Walker. I think he's uh, the most steady. Now he's he's he can has you know he has his moments where, you know he's got to make sure that he's um, uh, handling stuff the right way. But I think clearly he's the guy that uh, uh, is the most consistent with his uh, kind of approach when it comes to handling things emotionally, for sure. Up next, Colin Hassel. Hey, Chris, I was just wondering in terms of, you know, in-season, I guess, rescheduling, you know, who's sort of taking the lead on that? Is that something that you're able to do um, or, is, or is there someone else on your staff that does that? And sort of what is that process like? Well, David Egelhoff handles scheduling on our staff. He and I work together with it, Colin. And, um, you know, it's, um, you know, this year's obviously, you know, we've talked about it so many times how different it is, but, uh, I think what we try to do right now is, is uh, as you might expect, Ryan Peden, given just who Ryan is, has a number of friends in college basketball. He's the friendliest assistant coach in the country. And um, so because of that, he's got a lot of contacts. And, and uh, uh, so usually the three of us will put our heads together and uh, kind of work the phones if, if – um, you know, we need an extra game. And, it, and is Moose's injury, is that short-term, long-term? Do you have any update on that? Yeah, I, th I think he's, he's, uh, he practiced yesterday, so I think it, you know, it looks like he's, he'll be, we'll see how he is today. He'll be a game-time decision as well. It was just some, um, I think it was just some soreness in his Achilles area, and uh, I think that was why uh, there was hesitation about playing him in the last game. Thanks. Up next, Sean Dunnigan. Hey, Chris. With the Big Ten schedule starting so a little bit earlier this year, do you like having a, a game against a team like Notre Dame to help prepare you for what's to come? Yes, absolutely, Sean. I, you know, I may not feel like that uh, in the midst of the game, but uh, absolutely I do. I, I think it's important to get, as Steve mentioned earlier, some of that feedback that you need to – to move forward and work on some things. So no question. Um, I, I like, you know, playing a game like this, even though it's going to be a great challenge, but I, I like the feedback that we're going to be able to take from it, uh, win or lose moving forward. And then through the first three games, has there, has there been anything on this team that has really surprised you from what you've seen in practice preseason to what you've seen in these first three games? There's been anything surprised that, that surprised me. Um, I definitely think we'll shoot it better than what we've shot it. Um, I also think that that we've handled the ball really well. Um, our our assist to turnover ratio and our and our turnover percentage has been really really good, uh, and that's been an improvement for us. Uh, we'll see how consistent that stays, but um, when you have veteran guards, I think that helps in that regard. But uh, that's been a really pleasing thing. 
Thank you. Up next, Tony Gerdman. Chris, you mentioned your message to, to Justin with his shooting. With Kyle and EJ, knowing what they can bring to the offense when their shot is falling and you see it fall in practice, when it's not falling in the game, do you, do you have to dial them back or do you give them the same message? No, I think it's just – yeah, it's, it's a good question. I just think it's um, play to your strengths. You know, play to your strengths. I don't think um, – you know, necessarily either one of those guys are defined by is their three-point shot falling or not. Um, so play to your strengths, play to who you are. It's not to say that they can't and won't make those shots. Uh, and they've got the freedom to shoot open ones. Kyle hit a big one in the game the other day. Um, but uh, I think just keep taking good ones. But again, don't be defined by whether or not, you know, you're making threes or not because their their game's bigger than that. Thanks. And last question goes to Adam Jardy. Uh, to sort of a two part real quick was, uh, did Alabama and AM actually make it to Columbus before the game was canceled or, or did that all happen before they left? Yeah, they were here. Okay. Uh, they were here on campus and, uh, uh, unfortunately they, 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 uh, they had bust here and, and, uh, you know, got the, got the call, uh, from our medical staff that uh, uh, that the game wasn't going to be able to happen. So, uh, um, you know, felt felt bad for them and, um, you know, hope that everything is, is good with the, the uh, person that tested uh, positive. Hope, hope everybody's healthy there. But, yeah, it was – they were here. And then what will – testing protocol. Okay. And well, what will be the procedure for you guys now? Will you, will you fly? Will you – bus like what, what will happen will you get tested when you get to Notre Dame or what are the logistics now for you guys going down the road we were tested this morning um we'll probably we'll, we'll bus to more games this year than we ever have we'll we'll travel more day of games uh than we ever have um we're we're flying the South Bend but we'll uh we'll bus to more more we've already looked at that and planned on that uh busing to more games and we've also uh toyed with the idea of going day of games uh, so we'll get tested tomorrow morning and uh, see what those those results results are in the morning. And we leave today or we leave tomorrow? We're going to leave tonight okay. after practice. Thank you. All right. That's all we have for you today, Coach. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Thanks, guys. Be healthy. Thanks, Chris. Chris.